1994, then President Bill Clinton signed the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, into law. The idea was to boost the economies of the United States, Canada, and Mexico by eliminating taxes on most goods imported and exported between the three nations. But the results of that agreement have been mixed, with some industries thriving and others taking a hit. A good example of that is farming. Corn and grain producers in the Midwest have reaped the benefits with exports of these crops more than quadrupling since NAFTA was put in place. But right here in South Florida, growers of fruits and vegetables are struggling. Cheaper Mexican imports have flooded the market, making it difficult for local farmers to make a profit. Recently, the Iowa Public Television series Market to Market met with worried farmers in South Dade who support President Trump's current push to renegotiate NAFTA. A new trade deal, they say, cannot come soon enough. Kern Carpenter is a third-generation tomato grower in Homestead, Florida. He's watched the acres planted across Miami-Dade County dwindle from tens of thousands in the early 1980s down to around 1,000 today, leaving just a handful of producers. Situated atop the abundant Biscayne Aquifer, South Florida is a traditional supplier of winter fruits and vegetables. Area growers agree they are incapable of satisfying all domestic demand, but Carpenter says NAFTA destroyed his upper hand by flooding the market with cheap produce. And he says the result is easy to spot in grocery store aisles. Last year was the worst year of all the years that I farmed. The price average like $6 a box throughout the whole year. It takes about $10 average to, to just to break even, so it was a total disaster. Carpenter hung on, though, driven by the outcome of 2016's presidential election. NAFTA has been a horrible deal for the United States. It's been very good for Canada. It's been very good for Mexico, but it's been horrible for the United States. I was thrilled to death when Trump became president because he's the only one that really was smart enough to see that we have a huge problem and something needs to be done. And he seems to be at least trying to attempt to do something about it. For countless Americans, this agreement has failed. But NAFTA renegotiations have been complicated. Midwestern row crop farmers largely support the deal, as is, for quadrupling farm trade and boosting exports of grain and oil seeds. I feel like we're forgotten. No offense to the growers out west, I have friends that are out there, um, but a lot of that's subsidized by the government. They farm 30, 40,000 acres. That's a huge farm. And they do it with six guys. On our farm, we have between 60 and 80 people at any given day working every day, harvesting crops. Tommy Vick also grows tomatoes in Homestead, but he's diversified his 900 acres of perishables to target niche markets and hedge against cheaper imports. You don't know what the market's going to do, but if I've got 28 different crops, if I don't make it on one of them, at least half of them are going to make something. Vic may be ahead of the curve, but he believes Mexico can still cut into his bread and butter. Bottom line, to pay somebody $2 a day to work, you know, even though it's a third world country, you know, it's, it's, that's not fair. What would be an ideal situation? It's hard to say. Quotas and tariffs have been floated, but as both sides continue to search for remedies, Vic and others say NAFTA also has unintentionally increased smuggling opportunities. If they send a load of tomatoes, but you've got $2 million worth of drugs in there, who cares if they use the tomatoes or don't use the tomatoes? So that in turn gets dumped on the market and affects us also. Peppers and... Uh... But illegal trade practices like currency manipulation and predatory pricing remain a top concern for some U.S. farm groups and local government. What they're looking at now is the ability to seasonally bring the anti-dumping suits, which Mexico has said is a non-starter, which right there tells you that they're dumping seasonally. Miami-Dade County Agricultural Manager Charles LaPrade says farm sales in his area average $700 million annually. But under the current system, half the growers of any commodity have to sign on to anti-dumping litigation, which he says costs nearly $1 million per case. 
our window is such that they know they can hammer us between January and March, and we can't get the 50% to, to bring a suit after that. LaProd would like to see national agricultural interests coordinate trade deals that create a level playing field for all domestic producers. We need to help each other. I can't say it any more than that. But don't put a guy out of business here just because you want, you know, 10 cents more a pound on the phone. LaProd and Carpenter are both apprehensive about food security and diminishing acres. I've seen limes that used to be here be $100 a box. After this hurricane we just had back in the Back in the fall, avocados were devastated here. Mexican avocados were $100 a box. So I promise you, when, uh, when the vegetable growers are gone in Florida, there will be no cheap produce coming out of Mexico. With farmers on the edge of their seat ahead of another round of trilateral talks, some Floridians may be prepping for a final harvest. And while President Trump gets credit for calling attention to NAFTA's inconsistencies, it's unknown what sort of yield will sprout from the current political environment. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner. And here to share more on how changes to NAFTA could impact South Florida farmers is Miami-Dade County Commissioner Daniela Levine Cava, serving District 8, which includes Homestead and parts of unincorporated South Dade, and Jorge Abreu, Executive Director of the Dade County Farm Bureau. Thanks to both of you for being here. Exactly. I can call you George as well, correct, yes, George? Okay. Yes, Commissioner, I want to start with you. And both of you, by the way, were nodding watching that piece. Absolutely. What needs to be done right now? You have proposed a resolution, legislation, encouraging the president to take this up immediately and to protect South Dade farmers and make this a level playing field for farmers in Mexico, Canada, and the United States, correct? Absolutely. Well, trade is very much in the news, and we're hoping that South Florida will weigh in on, on that. We have a unique situation. We grow winter crops. At one point, we were producing three quarters of the winter crop for the nation. And now with NAFTA and the low prices from Mexico, it's down to about 20%. So we need to uh, really think about this from uh, an economic perspective. Uh, we can buy local. Each of us has a choice at the supermarket. We can support our local growers. First of all, we know when we purchase locally that uh, those vegetables and fruits are uh, not being contaminated with uh, pesticides that are not allowed here but might be allowed on the Mexican crops. We also know that the workers are being paid um, according to our pay scale and, uh, and not the Mexican pay scale. And we also know that those uh, vegetables and fruits are not c coming into our country with possible pests, possible uh, human trafficking or illegal substances like drugs. So really it's our power at the grocery store that each of us can, can uh, take part. George, tell us what farmers are telling you because you're talking to them and then you're taking their plight, their argument to Washington and you're working with the commissioner. Tell us what they're saying to you. They want fair trade, not free trade. Uh, they want renegotiation of NAFTA. They want NAFTA to go away because there's other organizations that are benefiting from it. They want, they just want a fair trade to be able to make money, make a living. They want their family to keep farming. Uh, current carpenter that's on the video, he's a third generation farmer and he's worried because his kid wants to farm. And he wants to make sure that his kids can farm and be able to do it and be successful at yeah. it. Yeah, because you were telling me too when we were spe speaking earlier, <clears throat> there was a period of time in the mid 80s there were many, many farms in South Day, 25 plus farms, and now we're down to how many? We're about three farmers right now. And we were in D.C. a couple months ago with Kern. Um, he asked some of the congressmen, I want to know if I can farm next year or not. Yeah. Commissioner. <laughs> Agriculture is still number two economic driver in Miami-Dade County. So we're talking not only about families that have invested sometimes generations in farming, but we're talking about a significant part of our local economy and the workforce. Also, we benefit from having that open space. People love to go visit in Redland. Uh, there are still places to pick fruit uh, as, as uh, you know, if you, even if you're not a farmer, uh, you can learn about agriculture in South Dade. We're working hard to increase opportunities through agritourism and other ways to really make sure that this economy stays alive. And so what is it that needs to be done? Because the arguments are 
And then we hear that from the farmers in the piece, it's difficult for them to compete when in Mexico there are perhaps child labor laws that are being violated. The wages that they're paying their workers are much less than what you're paying right. in the United States because of the discrepancy in the laws, the oversight, environmental issues. So many of those things have been mentioned. So how do we tackle those? Is that within that NAFTA negotiation to get tough? Well, we think that uh, fair wages can be considered as part of the equation. The differential in pay is not fully taken into consideration. So, uh, and, and also we want to make sure that there isn't dumping. Mm. Dumping is not just because they're producing. Dumping is actually where the prices are artificially lower and then after our growing season might go up. And at the end of the day, you know, our consumers are not seeing the benefit of this. It's all going to the, the middle people because the prices between local and uh, imported produce are not very different. Yeah. George, do you think it's just an awareness issue for those of us who are consumers? We go into the supermarket and we see the tomatoes or the other uh, produce is on sale and we go for the cheaper items. We need to look at the label and see what's local. I think a lot of people have gone to the point of what's cheaper yeah. uh, rather than seeing what's local or what's a, what, grown in the United States. Right. Um, we might not have tomatoes available now this time during the summer, but it might be available during the fall and winter. Support your local farmers, support your communities. When in the piece, when one of the farmers was talking about how the Midwestern farmers who are in support of NAFTA, but they're growing grain. They have a completely different situation than our farmers here in South Dade. Do we need to get on a, we need to get in communication with them or an agreement with them to support one another? Do you think that would be helpful that they support us, we support them? Our farmers, they're all, what we're growing are specialty crops. We're not subsidized. All the farmers in the Midwest with the grain is subsidized. So whether they farm or don't farm, they're gonna make some money. Uh, one farmer can farm a thousand acres and like uh, Tommy said, he has six employees out in a field in one given day. Sure, yeah, well there's the disparity between six employees in one farm for the grain, Correct. and then 60, he said, perhaps working down, picking the, 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 the local crops. Well, if there are tropical fruits that are unique to our area, and we do have markets for those things. Obviously, these farmers have been incredibly agile, incredibly adaptive, the Vic family, I know once upon a time grew potatoes and then they changed to tomatoes and now they you heard you know they've diversified so they can get a profit in one or another of sure. them even if they have multiple crops. So these farmers are there doing a real service to us as a nation in producing food locally in a place that fortunately has a great uh, long season and we need to support them. I think it's our uh, patriotic duty and it's good for our health, it's good for our economy. Um, and how can we do that as consumers? And we hear so much too about farm to table, yes. which sounds great and healthy. So how do we do that as local South Floridians? Yeah, well this show is a great example yeah. of raising awareness about this unique uh, benefit that we have right here in South Florida. I am really passionate about it and obviously we have a very strong farm bureau and a very um, solidified farming community but the general public needs to really get behind this and understand the benefits of, of local purchasing and the multiplier effect on the economy yeah. and yeah so maybe they might save a, a little bit of, of money on imported produce but the overall benefit to our economy is so much better when local. we buy local. Thanks to both of you for being here and bringing awareness to this. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And do you have a comment on the potential changes to NAFTA or are you concerned? Are you a concerned farmer? We would love to hear from you. Send us your thoughts via email or go to our Facebook page at your South FL. You can send us a video or a message about topics impacting you and your community. We always look forward to hearing from you.